Thank you. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Resurrected Winners You podcast. If this is your first time listening, think of us as your friendly neighbourhood video game book club coming together to discuss a specific, specific, I find that hard to say, game each and every episode dismantling, picking at the car, dismantling and picking at the carcass to bring you some juicy morsels of discussion. We talk ins, we talk outs and if you're lucky we might even have a little bit of fun along the way. Whether you've played the game alongside us in anticipation of the podcast, whether you've played the game before, or even if the game is nested comfortably in your pile of shame, there'll be something here for you. So be rest assured we have you covered. And booming the episode into your ear holes this week is me, David, alongside your friendly neighbourhood borderline weeb, Mr. Alex Aldridge. How are you doing today, mate? And don't worry, there isn't anyone else here for this week for us to forget that I've asked you that question before we move on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No one's going to steal my thunder of... Ange mania. Um, I'm well. I'm excited for the episode number. What number are we on? Sixty Pe- something. Four. Yeah. So people will, will have already heard it in the intro, but I've now just decided that all the little radio bits are going to be N64. Oh, brilliant! Because, I can't wait for that. Yeah. So landmark. This it's is the landmark we needed to get to all along. This is the we've hit we've hit it at our peak. It's a shame we're not doing the banjo episode on episode sixty four, but you can't no. do everything. You can't plan everything perfectly. No, um, it's from a sort of I don't know when was this like a nineties era is trying to um, evoke. Is that fair? Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think of like the era that like do like doom and i don't know is it more doom or quake probably well it's a single it's hard to say i've been thinking about that myself actually because i did see somebody say it's like doom and quake and i kept thinking but they're not the same no no and doom remember when we were what was the game that we were playing was it maybe even a doom oh it was doom 64 and then i started going back to play the old doom games the the old doom games are not i mean they are quick and they are like they are action packed but they're not in the same way as like the sort of modern boomer shooter is if that makes sense like they are yeah there's a lot the, of... the modern boomer shooter does it on purpose they just yeah. try and turn it up to 11 whereas quake does do that but then quake, and quake obviously we had polygonal models and yeah fully sort of 3d environments whereas doom did not it was all sprite scaling so it's a chicken and the egg though is question isn't it because Quake probably doesn't exist without Boom. Eh, boom. Doom. No, <laughs> I think it was called Boom. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, they really missed a trick now, looking yeah, back. Looking back when they they were going to rename the genre after the age of the people that play these games, they should have called it Boom. Which is weird because there's absolutely. Boom what? has probably played this game when. Well, they probably played Doom when Doom came out. Maybe that's why they call it that. Yeah. I yeah, would accept. Like that. A, if they're saying it's yeah. for Boomers. In the 90s, because like my dad, for example, is a boomer. He would have played this, maybe. Yeah, I played it, so he must have given it to me. So, but we're not boomers, so we're not modern no, boomer shooters. We're, are dirty not mill- we're dirty avocado munching millennials, aren't we? So We are. My uh, my daughter is Gen Alpha. Oh, that sucks. I found the other day. <laughs> yeah. The fuck is that? Millennials are out of letters, didn't they? Sounds quite good, because what's after us? Gen Z or something like that? Yeah. We're Gen Y, aren't we, technically? Oh, are we? Well, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah, because Gen X is like the, you know, the Kurt Cobain era. Gen just before Alpha. Us. Gen Alpha, yeah. Sucks to be her. Gen Beta, I can't remember when that is going to be. I can never I can never tell whether it's Beta or Beta. Mm, I think what it's, do you say? I think it's, I think it's Beta. Beta. If you're from the UK. Okay. okay. And just like Data. 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 Data, data, but I don't know. I, I'm, I'm so like saturated in American culture, like in terms of like a lot of the stuff I've listened to over the years. I probably like. I think Z sounds better than Z, so I tend to say Z in the alphabet. Well, I guess you've got the the excuse that you're Scottish, so you don't have to abide by like the Queen's English. You can just be like, no, fuck that. Not doing. Come it. over the wall and tell me how to say Z <laughs> or Z. One thing I don't like though is uh, and that's purely because it just doesn't make sense is that when english people start adopting saying like today is 
June 13th. Mm-hmm. No, it isn't. It's 13th of June. 13th. It, that one doesn't even make sense. Like, June 13th doesn't make sense. Like, no. it goes small to big. Yeah, 13th exactly. June, day but then don't, Amer- don't they also say the time weird as well? Do they? What do they say? And they say it's like a 12 after 7 or something. <laughs> do they? I wouldn't even know what that means. Is that 12 mm. minutes after 7? I think so, yeah. I don't think they say like 20 to 9. Maybe they do. Americans, tell us how you tell time. Yeah. If there are any of you out there. Well, we're probably, we're, we're we're probably going to make speak. them all unsubscribe and You've muted, stop. Which is worrying because that would mean that you're not being recorded through your mic. I can hear it clicking. Oh, you can't hear me. You ain't got your headphones on. Come on, Alex. Oh, you're back. Yeah. Headset just decided it was... <laughs> okay, so you're you're through Discord on the headset, but you're definitely recording on the mic, aren't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me let me just double-check while this is going on. Yay. Yep. Yeah, we're all good. Sick. That was weird. <clears throat> anyway. Yeah, we're about to make them go turn off and unsubscribe. I, I always, We've done that many times in the past. Always gives me a giggle... Um, and it makes sense, I guess, but it gives me a giggle how literal a lot of their descriptors are. So, like, a pavement is a sidewalk. And they call... <laughs> they call... Um, oh, is it... They've got a name for, the, for, like... The Pelican Crossing's got a funny name as well. I can't remember what that is. And, like, it says walk and don't walk. Crosswalk? Uh, is it a crosswalk? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, just literal. And they, they call... My favourite one is um, roundabouts or turning circles. Well, they don't have any, so I guess they don't know what's they don't, going on. They which is really confused. Turning circles are a, a very good way of traffic management. They are. But as we discovered, yeah. um, I don't know how to do traffic management because I tried to play City Skylines and I cannot figure it out. It I did see you mentioning the, that somewhere. It spoils the fun of, of me playing oh. that game. Cause I, it's a you really said it in your, um, in your, what's it called again? Substack. Substack, Substack yeah. Yeah, you um, said it in that, which again, if anyone, go on, tell them where to get that, because people listening, if you want games news in your emails, instead of having to do work during the day, yeah. this is what you want, because it's very, very useful. I've started doing a weekly news roundup on a Friday of all the news stories that are either interesting or have grabbed my attention in some way. So if you head over to supersmiley.substack.com, you'll be able yep, to it'll be in the there. podcast description again. Yes. Um. So, yeah give that a subscribe because it's i'm enjoying doing it so give me a reason to keep going please that would be nice well we're diving into this podcast did you see that the goomba stomp is now not going away is it not has it been resurrected has it Uh, is this just a massive ruse to get us to stop posting on their website uh apparently because now i can't so (laughs) yeah it was (laughs) i can't i can't post anything anymore i don't know if he's taken it down briefly let's let's see if the website's still there so what are they doing because is it just carrying on he said it's going to grow exponentially now because they found some sort of outside uh investment or something i don't know why he didn't just like surely someone on that site would have taken it off his hands if he didn't want to do it anymore yeah, because that was that was absolutely huge. I feel like you just right, let's see. Just pass pass on the goodwill. Like, um, was it Daniel Dwyer used to do Citizen Gamer? You just sort of when you move on and you decide you're not doing it anymore, give it to someone who wants to do it, and then they can carry it on. And then, like yeah, Giant Bomb, exactly. do you ruin it, like they did to their website. Uh, but yeah, no, I can't. Um, I'll post a single thing. <laughs> I don't know what's happened. Maybe he's just taking it off of everybody while he's rebuilding it or something. I don't know. I don't know. He better have done. Otherwise, well, nothing's going to happen, is it? No, absolutely nothing. Not a single thing. Nope. Is it time to dive in? I don't even think we've told people. We've talked brief. We've talked sort of around the boomer shooter subject, but I guess they'll have read it in the podcast description. But this week we're playing, or we've been playing, Bolt Gun. Which yeah, is a sort of modern Warhammer forty K. Warhammer forty K. And I'm interested to sort of get some insight into you. Into you? From you in terms of in fact, let's start with it. What's your what's your sort of experience of Warhammer up to this point? It is as minimal as minimal can possibly do you, get. Do you I think you've have never played it? I've never 
learn anything about it. All I've ever seen is that there are video games that exist that you seem to like. Oh, the Even my dad doesn't play Warhammer in his in his you know retirement age of tabletop gaming. None of his mates are Warhammer guys. There. Surprised by that because it's the biggest. It's like the biggest one. I mean, I think I think Games Workshop have got a bigger um, t- turnover than some small countries. Like it's a massive company. Really? Yeah, they're absolutely ginormous. Jesus Christ! Yeah, I think um, during the pandemic i think they got a lot of they got like they did they made a massive expansion because people were like oh yeah i used to paint little models when i was a kid i'll just do that for a bit and then they were expecting some sort of like wind back after people went back to normal but it, it hasn't happened and it's just kept going i there's like oh they've, wow they've just released up so every so often every time they release a new an update to their rules of their main game where i think they're on 10th edition has just come out in the last couple of weeks um they release a box set which is like a box it's got the rules in it it's got like a board some terrain and it's got two 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 similarly strength and like similar points or power rated armies that can fight against each other um and that sold out in some like two seconds after it when it launched <laughs> it is is un, is unreal Jesus. at the moment how how big that ip is is um so can you explain to me Warhammer is different to 40k because that's that's is that it? Is that all they have? Like Warhammer is like traditional fantasy, is it? So games Am I were, making that up? So that's you know, really you're, you're 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 kind of you're kind of right kind of kind of not. So Games Workshop is the company that owns everything. And then they have they used to have Warhammer Fantasy, but that that got replaced by something called Age of Sigmar, which is like their fantasy arm of Warhammer. So that's like sword shields, bows and arrows, and stuff like that, and monsters and things like that. And then they have yeah Warhammer yeah. Forty Thousand, which is set forty thousand years in the future, um, which is the one from the game that we played, and that's all like that's their sci-fi version. And then they also own. Yeah. Um the Lord of the Rings tabletop game as well, which um they they do. Um but yeah, that's the difference. It's basically oh, right. they've, okay. got a, they've got a they've got a fantasy side and they've got a, a science fiction side and basically people pick whether they like science fiction or fantasy better. And the rules are quite different as well actually. Um I think 40k is by far their biggest mm. their biggest one of those games. Um and you see a lot of if there's going to be big changes to the to the rule set, you often see it in Age of Sigmar first, from what I've seen, because then if it's successful, they'll then slowly roll it into 40k. I see. Yeah, it's then story it wise, big table. it's it's both. It's absolutely impenetrable. I find the story because it is so big and so massive, the lore. But I think as as, as a sort of like, so you're an ultramarine in, in boat gun, um, which is like the yes. The Emperor's mm. favourite chapter of Space Marines. There's lots and lots of different chapters, but um, basically, if you think of the Emperor like Jesus, he sort of sits in this room and he's all powerful and all seeing. Mm. Um, he can't move. He's, he's in this just like we, his body's there, it's not rotten, but he doesn't seem to be present in his body and he can sort of move around and watch people. So if you think of him like a god, essentially, and then each, each like leader of all the different warhammer factions that you get um have got their own sort of chapter leaders and stuff but the ultramarines are like the the classic one they're by far the most popular even though i think if you were to speak to a lot of warhammer 40k fans people would hate them but it's, it's basically like the default space marine starter army um looking at their sort of lore they're very like almost latin in their makeup so like um all their names and stuff are quite Latin looking, and yeah, they're, they're essentially when you look at a, a space marine, think of them as like an I was going to say like an evil warrior monk, but they're they're neither even on evil nor good. They're just they are. Um, yeah, and that's kind of the. I was going to say they definitely seem religious. Zealot, zealot. Was it? Ze- they're like religious zealots. So like, there's um, yes, there's a there's a space marine army, and I'm forgetting what they're called but like they're essentially on the good guys side but they are tasked with so there's like armies that will infest planets and stuff like that and if this are this army gets a whiff of this sort of infestation they'll just go and wipe out the planet whether there's humans on it 
whatever they'll just wipe it clean off so like that's what i mean by they're they're, they're kind of on the good guy's side but you don't want to cross one they yeah. are in terms of size wise okay. i'm trying to think of like random info i can give you about space marines space marines are about four times the size of a normal human they've got multiple internal organs so that like they've got like, multiple hearts so that if one gets shot they can oh, carry on okay um yeah and they're just like super strong i think they can run i think was i was watching a thing the other day about them they can run up to about 60 miles an hour they're like beasts <laughs> <laughs> and they've got like i guess that's why the controller vibrates with every single step you take when yeah. you play this game yeah they're yeah they're absolute weapons if you stood next to space marines that you would be coming up to like his waist for example like um they're really big yeah. massive beasts um but yeah it's uh, other than that I, f- I find the lore completely impenetrable i think i've got in my notes somewhere that a lot of people don't really care about warhammer lore i think a lot of people that didn't know warhammer they just like to pay- they they like to paint the models i would say most of the warhammer fans rather than actually play the game yeah. and then there's a smaller section of people that like actually play the game and stuff um, i watch it there's i listen to a couple of podcasts actually talking about the game um, and there's a guy who used to work for Games Workshop who subsequently left to start his YouTube channel and podcast. And he was talking about when they release... So what they'll do is they'll periodically release these tomes, for example. Like, I've got one in my cupboard. It's There's, like, a bad guy called Abaddon. Abaddon and um, it's basically, like, a book that tells you about the story that's happening in the lore. And then as you skim through it'll give you like settings and and stuff like that sorry someone's phoning me it's really putting me off um stop buzzing um yeah so like it'll, what i'll do is i'll give you it'll give you lore i'll tell you a bit about the story and it'll lead you up to a certain point and then it'll give you a scenario so it'll be like this is what's happening this is what you need to do and then it'll let you play the scenario out um and i can't remember where i was going with that oh yes and when they when they release these books often they don't even play test them to make sure that they're balanced <laughs> so these things oh, right. okay. yeah which which puts a spin on it and i'm just like you are not even trying to make a fun game here you are just trying to sell me a little models which i can get behind i yeah. think if i think i was listening to something else and they're saying if you go on their website yeah but anyway enjoy feel free to cut any or all of that out and enjoy trying to make <laughs> something fun to listen to out of that absolute screed but um yeah well we jump into the main body of the podcast alex and see um yes see how we go and we'll we'll sort of jump on conversation as the, as it kind of makes itself apparent yes anyway yeah. like like i was saying i think i said it earlier on i hate the term but it's a it's actually quite a succinct way to get the genre across of these games annoyingly i hate how accurate it is and kind of as soon as you say boomer shooter people know exactly what kind of game you're talking about but essentially but um anyway bolt gun is a boomer shooter um it's running on the unreal engine is developed by a company called auroch auroch digital known for a bunch of games i have never heard of alex have you ever heard of auroch digital no so they made at all i'm surprised they got such a big license I'm surprised as well. Um, they made Warhammer 40k Boat Gun in 2023, which is what we're obviously talking about. And before that, they made a game for PS4, PS5, Xbox One called Brewmaster, which I've never heard of. It was a, bre- a beer brewing simulator. Um, before that, they made a game called Mars Horizon, um, a game called Last Days of Old Earth, and then they seem to have made a bunch of mobile games. Like, a, a, like This is a they're based in Bristol. Um, yeah, and it was made by 61 employees, which is, I don't know, it's quite small by today's okay. standards, right? Yes, sorry. Um, I think you've never... Um, oh, yeah, so where I got to was 61 employees. I feel like that's quite a small number of employees. Uh, well, I was thinking for this type of game, it's, it seems like a lot when you consider Doom was made by, like, five blokes in a log cabin or whatever oh, really? Yeah, okay, that's a good point. That is a That is a hellish good point and it's not exactly like i don't know like if you've what if you've got an artist i can't imagine it's i don't know is a boomer shooter a hard game to make do you think that's a good question it it's, really i mean it's a, probably a hard game to get the the tone and the delivery right but i wouldn't say from a technical standpoint maybe not yeah what's this made in unreal 4 yeah yeah uh i don't know that's a good one. Yeah, this is a 
the kind of thing that a bloke could just do by himself if he really cared. Enough. I bet that pro we played what was it Proteus earlier, mm-hmm. sort of independently because we're, we're planning to have a go on that co-op. But that seems like it was. I mean, that's humble games. So that's humble bundle people yeah. making it. So Can that's you... got to be a pretty cool. Team. I was. I've been trying to remember the game as a, as as you were talking there because it's like me trying to stumble my way through a video game I can't remember the name of. It's going to annoy people, but there was a there was a game that came out a number of years ago. I remember watching it on Total Biscuit. Actually, it's basically like a boomer shooter, but it's like a roguelike, and you start at the bottom, and you start off, and as you go through the levels, it's oh tower, tower, something tower, <laughs> gun tower. Oh, it's not ringing a bell. <sighs> boomer shooter tower game. Boo. The old boomy shady tower. Nah. Essentially, so there'd be people at home listening and absolutely shouting at me, but basically it was a boomer shooting. It was maybe like one or two guys, this game, and you start off at the bottom of this tower and you, you go through it and it's you die and you've got to restart, essentially. And as you go through, you pick up different weapons that have got different stats, abilities, and obviously you can get, like, it's the, the classic roguelike thing where you get the good run and getting the good weapons and you get all the way to the top and kill all the bosses and complete the game. But, yeah, that was that was made by, like, one or two people. So maybe it's not yeah. hard. Maybe it's a, it's a talent to get these games, the sort of, you're, like you are saying before, like the tone nailed. Because um, I, I think that's one thing that I noticed about well doom it's not it's the the ultimate doom boomer shooter the the 2016 doom yeah well yeah they named they nailed the feel of that and i think that would have been that game would have been fantastic no matter how it looked like they could have re overlaid these sort of sprite pixely graphics over the top of it and i think it still probably would have been a good game certainly enhanced by the good graphics but yeah i don't know i don't know that's an interesting question um my next question was going to be ask you about Warhammer, but it's essentially: Have you ever even thought about? Because you're you've been known to waste money on plastic shit, and you've been known I to have. play. You've been known to play a board game. Is it never? I crossed, have. never crossed your radar of interest at any point. Probably not. It doesn't. You know, it doesn't necessarily carry with it the greatest reputation. No, I would agree uh, with that for coolness. Although I, I would assume that it probably is actually quite a cool universe if you actually read into it. Um, it can be. I and certainly it can get that be, impression from this. I think um, the, the thing I, I think I was I was touching on it before, but the thing I find like deeply frustrating about the the Warhammer universe is because it's it's so vast and it has been going on for yeah. so long. I think it's like forty years old now, and that if you wanted to know all about it. You, get lost you're never going to do it you've basically got to hmm. pick you've got to pick one thing so like there was a, yeah. the space wolves is one for example which is like a space marine chapter that are that are like vikings but space marines so then someone says right right space wolves are my army and then they can sort of fall down a hole learning about space wolves that's doable but then learning about yeah. all the different the different armies you can get is is impossible and it's it's impossible, and I think for me personally, I think what stops me from ultimately getting into it is that because it's a board game that essentially has to be balanced for play, you can't yeah. have any faction being much better than the other. So essentially, you've got a whole universe that has been at war for all this time fighting each other, and it's essentially a stalemate because you can't have one team beat the other because then people won't want to buy the plastic models of the team that lost. So... They essentially yeah, just they, they essentially just essentially but like endlessly butt heads against one another, and I find that quite quite dull after a while. Um, but I can't the, understand that. the idea of the world is really cool. There's like the bits that I've often found quite interesting about the lore in the world is like there's these things called hives, under hives, and it's essentially what it is. It's like a planet sized city. And then you can make stories within the city and you basically just ignore everything else that's going on around you. You ignore the space yeah. range, you ignore the outside battle and it's just this smaller story about gangs in this like dystopian universe and that's quite interesting. Yeah. But it's just the whole the whole overarching thing I find quite off-putting. Um, I play... Yeah. 
how I, does it like, how does it actually play? Is it? Hang on a minute. Wait. Right, I'm I'm back again. Just acknowledge that I'm back You're by back saying again. hi, Alex. Hi, Alex. Yeah. I took my headphones out of my laptop and then for some reason that decided to <laughs> stop it recording, which is really weird. Um, oh, for goodness sakes. But yeah, like I don't actually even know how Warhammer plays as a board game. Is it dice rolls and stuff yeah, like that? Basically. Yeah, basically. Um, I've got a rough idea of how Warhammer plays. I play like a, a sort of mini version of Warhammer called Kill Team. And it, the idea of that is that there's like a... It, a game of Warhammer might have 30 Space Marine models on a, on a board that is like six by four feet. Um, yeah. Whereas my, the games I play are like two by two or something like that. And it's got right, like, okay. I've got like, well, I've got my kill team sitting over there, which is five models. And the idea behind this is it's a, it's a quicker paced game. Like me and my friend can get through a game in like half an hour to 45 minutes. And it's much smaller scale being the idea being that you're controlling a, an elite group behind enemy lines rather than a big, battle going on um, yeah. and i find that a bit more palatable and a bit more a bit more easy to absorb but yes essentially it's a it's a dice roll so if it's your turn for example you can move your your model probably up to about six inches and then you can decide if you want to run is this are you literally measuring these yeah as well? you've got to measure and yeah. tape and dice on yeah your, on your on your on your table um and then like say if, if i'm sh- shooting a gun at you it'll have a points value so it'll be like four dice and you roll four dice and it's threes to hit and then if you hit on threes you then roll to wound so then say you roll your four dice and two of them are th- above three and above you then take those two and roll them again and it's maybe three plus to hit as well so anything once you roll again if it's three plus so you hit and then you wound so then you basically have to get three plus twice with those dice and then you sort of match your wounds and each character will have a certain amount of wounds they can take before they die and you just play like that and you and there's like five rounds and by the end of the round you'll have like objectives and stuff like that so it'll be either yeah. kill people or it'll be collect data intelligence or it'll be destroy something you can like pick stuff up and run away with it and things like that so depends on the scenario i even seen a scenario in which there was a a bunch of dwarves in a in a in a vehicle and they're basically trying to drive from one end of the map to the other while other people shot at them and tried to stop them stuff like that so it's really essential so is it putting a narrative it's putting a narrative to it is there like a yeah. little sort of scenario card and yes. then you've got like it's like yeah. the bloodborne game that always does like every card you pick up will tell you a little bit more story and it'll have some exactly. dialogue and things yeah so the story is meant to be emergent like my friend tony and i are meant to make the story up and at the end of each match right. depending on how well each character performs they get xp so then they can come back with better equipment in the next game okay um, and level up as they go on it's, it's sort of like a D D meets a i was gonna say is there D elements too, kind yeah. of but there's, there's no like play acting or anything like that the, 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 yeah, sto- yeah. the story is whatever you just dis- decide between yourselves and Mm -hmm. go with that um but yes i mean it can be fun i i play it maybe twice a month and that's more than enough for me i don't really have any interest Mm -hmm. in going back to to be honest it's a good it's a good way to hang out with a friend i don't i probably wouldn't see very much otherwise um yeah yeah a couple of beers chill out not having to look at the screen for once exactly that's exactly for me that's exactly it um it's too expensive and if i'm going to waste money on things i'd much rather waste money on video games but yeah yeah it is what it is anyway let's get the plot out of the way because i got to the end of the plot of this game and couldn't have told you a single thing about it really so no i don't think i remember reading any words no i took in it's not (laughs) just they were there it's not important so let's just get through it because i think it's it would be remiss to not talk about it. We can have a wee chat about it and then we'll move on to the development and the gameplay and stuff like that. Cool. So this takes place on a Forge world called Graia, several years after the events of Warhammer 40k Space Marine, um, which is... The game. The game, yep, that's correct. It's getting a sequel this year. It's getting a it sequel, yeah. And Well, this year's starting next. It looks quite good, actually. Um, it actually looks badass. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the player takes the role of a space marine called Malum Kado. He is a stern guard veteran space marine of the Ultramarines chapter sent by the Inquisition to this planet Gryer um, on a mission of great importance. Since the Orc and Chaos invasions 
of from years before, the Inquisition has kept Ga- Graia, I can't say that word, so I'm going to get it wrong, every time, closely watched for further threats. Um, Inquisitor, this is where it gets difficult. Inquisitor is a, is a, is a type of... Um, He's a member of the Imperium, which is what a Space Marine is part of. This is where it gets yeah. really impenetrable and so annoying. Like it, he's essentially like a special policeman. Um, okay, that's the best. Let's let's think of it as that. Um, the Inquisition has kept closely watched uh, for further threats. Inquisitor Siebel of the Ordo Malus reveals that rogue tech priests of Graia have experiment, t- experimented with the remains of the late Inquisitor Drogon's power source, which I, I've got abs- got absolutely no idea what that even means. <laughs> and <laughs> the experiments have resulted in the opening of a warp. Now, the warps are these big things that tend to open up in the world and, yeah, they, I don't know what they are, if I'm honest. I'm not even going to is, is that where the enemies are all coming from, is it? Yeah, enemies they're can just, come well, out they the just warp. keep appearing on screen, don't they? They just seem to, like, teleport in. Exactly, yes. Um, and they've allowed the forces of chaos to once again invade the Forge world. Chaos is basically notation for bad guys. Um, so basically they've opened a portal to hell. Like in yeah, that, that works. <laughs> yeah, that works yeah. to me. Um, Malum Kado and his squad has been tasked with retrieving the power source and aid the servo skull, which is that thing that follows you about. Um, making jokes. Making jokes, yeah. Um, when the ultramarines make planet fall, their drop pod is severely damaged during the descent and crash land on the planet's surface, leaving only Madam Ko as a sole survivor. I've got more here for the story, but that's essentially what it is. You are off to investigate chaos on a planet. You crash land on the planet. You're the only survivor, and it's up to you to basically go and take all that shit down and mess yeah. and and deal with chaos on your own. And deal with it, he does. I was going to say it's enough to propel the story forward, but it's not. Like that is that is that is that is. I know I've I've read it out, and I know I play this game, but for the most part, that is gobbledygook to me. That makes no sense. Um, mm-hmm. um, it doesn't mean anything to me. It doesn't make me particularly want to play the game. But what does make me want to play the game? is the actual gameplay. Um, what's your feeling of the game? Because we were we were talking about this over the weekend and I was saying yeah. how hard I found the sort of mm, sort of second third of the game, maybe like towards the end of chapter two and then like the first three quarters of chapter three was, were quite tough. I don't know if I eventually yes. got better at it or got into a groove or it just sort of got over itself, but I find it really, really hard. And you said it was quite... I, I don't know if I'm picking this up wrong, but you said it played quite differently from a lot of other boomer shooters, or it was it was sort of different in structure. Is that fair? Um, I, I played a bit of Ion Fury around this, and mm. that felt a lot sort of looser, um, way faster, uh, and the level design in that was really odd. It's very ver- that game's very vertical. Um, Oh, really? It's almost like they, they 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 kind of build levels like basically like on a slope, and they sort of slope upwards. You got like like stair. You're just climbing sort of stairs along the side of cities with just big gaps in the middle. I don't know. I don't really know why. There's even less of a story in that game. Um, this game um, felt it, it felt tighter. It felt a lot more refined. There, there was actually quite a lot of modern shooter feel to this other than the lack of like aiming down sights or whatever but um i could really feel this more trying to ape something like doom 2016 than the original doom and and how it actually feels to play maybe that's because there was an auto aim on it that maybe made it feel a little bit more snappy and i'm not sure but um in terms of how it plays, there's there's almost nothing to fault about it. It's really, really solid. It's really like really just relentless but fun for one the most th- part. One thing I found about it that as the game went on, I felt like the the way in which it ratchet. And again, this is why I'm interested in sort of your history of the boomer shooter and how it compares to the other ones because I felt it's how it approached sort of difficulty scaling was to either throw more and enemies at you which is kind of what mm. i was expecting or like the bosses for example just were utter bullet sponges and they really were if i was to sort of say like my personal weak points of the game it was towards these boss fights because i felt like they were just relent relentless in in a way that like some of them were i found really hard but a lot of them i felt relentlessly just 
what's the word? It just mon- no monotonous isn't the right word. It just kept going, and it was just like we're just going to bullet sponge you so that you just got to. Uh, yeah, relentless is probably the right word I'm trying to think of. There's just there's just no there's no like tangible tactic to fighting the bosses other than find the gun that they're weak against and then just avoid the mobs for ages and ages. Like the final boss having three forms is a fucking joke. Yeah. Where you're in an arena where you can fall in lava, you're constantly just having to run away from like the tiniest little enemies that are like knee height to you that you can almost forget are there half the time. I felt like a lot of the time in the boss arenas, especially if I was running around trying to avoid getting or trying to even find the boss, by the time I actually got there to take some shots at him, I'd have about 20 to 30 of those little green dickheads like nibbling at my ankles that I'd have to turn around and deal damage to them. That I just, you could so seldom actually focus on attacking the boss because everything was just like piling enemy after enemy and he whatever boss you're fighting is gonna as you say is gonna not only be a bullet sponge but after you've given them a certain amount of damage they're probably gonna teleport somewhere else so then you have to go find them again in amongst the mobs and mobs of enemies so i'm with you there the difficulty spikes in this game did seem unbalanced they did seem sporadic in a bad way and because like you'd start, you know, you'd, you'd do a really difficult boss fight at the end of World 2 or whatever, Chapter 2. And you'd start Chapter 3 and it would kind of be fine again for a bit. It takes all your fucking weapons away for some reason. I do not understand. Especially considering the story is supposed to just be very, very straightforward, linear. Oh, well, I've gone on the massive elevator. Now it's Chapter 3, but somehow I dropped all my guns off the side of the elevator on the way up. Um they would like lower it down again. You start almost every single level would start with, you'd have like the cultists Mm -hmm. and then you'd move up into like the pink horrors and the blue guys. And then all of a sudden it would just be one of the purge moments where it would just throw like a hundred enemies at you in an arena, which again is very doom 2016 doom eternal. There's the doom eternal thing with the Mm -hmm. weapons, you know, where you had to like get specific weapons that enemies were weak to. I feel like this game has copied that as well to add that in with the the little skull icon on your top of your screen for mm-hmm. the health bar. So, yeah, that mixed in with the what seems to be like obligatory, confusing level design. That I was going to ask have you about that. To boomer shooters. Yeah. I was con- um, I was consistently getting lost. In, yeah, in the, without in a map. I mean, come on, come on, boys. Even that Proteus game we've just played. It's got has a map. A map. It does. Even Doom has a map. Like taking a map out of it. And sometimes, like I would get lost in levels where the way to get out of an arena that I was stuck in was like basically a, a a sort of back door in the corner of the room that's behind a wall, so you can't even see that it's a door. Um, when you mix that in, where you're either getting completely pelted by like I say, a hundred enemies that just keep spawning in and getting harder and harder. Probably a big bullet sponge somewhere in there as well. You're scrambling around for health, sprinting away from everything, and they're still following you to pick up all these tiny little health pickups. Then you're going straight into, well, now I'm totally lost, and you're walking around for 10 minutes not knowing where to go before you get completely Mm -hmm. gang raped again. Like, after a while, that the shine of that wears off and the you know the retro feel kind of makes you think well maybe games have come on somewhat since then i'm here i'm yeah. here for the guns i'm here for the violence i'm here for the the, the fast pace and the skill based gameplay but i'm not here for these old sensibilities of i can't find the fucking yellow key and when i do find it it's 10 minutes before i realize where the door was because there's no map and the enemies are going to respawn on my way back that's when the game became less fun and a bit more of a slog than i'd expected it would I, even um, though it's a short game as well it's a slog and it's six hours long yeah that's, something's gone wrong there that's the thing is I, I i felt like it was it was almost old school in its design to a fault yes. that, yeah you're right like when this game when this game is is up and running and fully low like in 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 the swing of things, it's absolutely fantastic. Like you're yeah. right, the the fast the fast pace and the movement is really fun. Um, and actually, like I kind of swung between being frustrated by it and actually quite liking it. So I eventually got quite annoyed by the that like you were talking about having to avoid the mobs towards the end of the game. Um, there's yeah. like parts within in the, like the middle to like the to the, like the beginning of the back half where 
I ended up quite liking it because it's a change of pace. I think when you're going through the levels, you've got to kill everything you see for the most part, or at least I yeah. was. And then when you're, you're trying to get the hundred percent, right? So yeah. And then when you when you enter the bit with the the boss, a lot of the time the boss was spawning the mobs, so it really there was really no point in killing the enemy. So you were trying to stay away yeah. from them who were also trying to damage. It was just like a dodging exercise. Yeah. While also trying to do damage to the enemies, but um, the, I I found that like. In that in that respect, like sometimes the pacing would be really really off because you'd be when like I'm saying when it's clicking along, it's it is really purring along and it's great. But then like you're like, oh no, my health is low. Mm. So then you'd have to go back and look for health. And I just thought, well, this is this is not fun particularly. You're you're taking me away from the fun to then retrace my steps to a level that I probably got lost in anyway. And I was yeah. probably hanging around the door because I was like, if I run away from this door. I'm not going to be able to find my way back. Case in point, there's a bit at the end. Well, where... especially if there's health behind you. Like, I'm going to yeah. stand next to this health pack until I need it, and then I'll go yeah. and try and find another one and fight from there. There's a bit, I can't remember what the level's called, but there's a bit where you're. In fact, do you know what? I'm going to look it up because I'm doing a lot of not being able to remember. Bolt gun levels. I what? do think that there are some ex... there are some really standout like set pieces and levels in this game at times, though, that's for sure. Is there so it's furnace? We'll come back to that set pieces. Um, the one that jumps out to me is furnace of damnation. It's the second last level where you're sort of making your way slowly upwards, up a long yeah. bit, and then um, there's a bit at the end where you've got to do some platforming. And it, I was walking around honestly in this small circular area for about 15 minutes, thinking, I don't know where I've got to go. All the enemies are dead, I am totally lost. Turns mm. out the smudgy pixelated graphics had just made my eyes miss a, a blatant hole in the wall that I could have walked up. <laughs> and I did that so many times. Um, so yeah, yeah, it, it was just sort is of that the one where it's like you're, you're firing yourself to those little like, yeah. Square encampments full of those. What are they? What are those big bastards called? Um, the ones are like the, aspiring champion and the other ones oh yeah cool. there's there's a, terminators and something terminators, else there's aspiring champion and then there's like the champion whatever he's called but they've got the weird name for it yeah i actually didn't realize that apparently um when the aspiring champion when you've killed them you know obviously then afterwards they they usually spawn they're like mm -hmm. chosen champion or whatever yes. if you apparently if you eviscerate the corpse of the aspiring champion before he has a chance to spawn then it doesn't actually spawn oh you can't right stop okay it. that makes sense because i'm usually trying I, to run away i had i had figured out that if i sort of killed him with explosions <laughs> i didn't get yeah another exactly one. yeah exactly I hadn't, worked yeah. Out, I hadn't worked out what was causing that i just worked out that it was something that seemed to work um yeah. But you're right. There's set pieces that are good. Um, there's there's one that I'm trying to think of. There's what did you think of that level where you're on a lift and you basically? You I thought that was great. That's, that's what I was thinking of yeah, when I said that. That's the one that jumps out to me. And like they've got, I like how they've got basically the things you're trying to get to on the lift that you're on. Yeah. And you basically got to leave the lift, go and get your stuff, and come back, and then just fight these endless hordes of enemies. And it it's big and it uses verticality in a way that I think that yeah. a lot of the game doesn't use. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Especially when you've you've got like a not quite but it's like a, almost like a de facto grappling hook with your left trigger because mm. you can slow down the game to a, basically to a pause and then he will launch himself towards whatever you're going to use your left trigger train chainsaw on and i, I wish i'd use that more because you could so you I. could use that to get higher if there's enemies above you you could aim at them and he would fly towards it so i was going to say exactly what you just said about that whole whatever the lift level is is where when you actually get into the fights on the lift the lift itself has about four or five levels some, there's some like platforming you can do you can jump right down mm. to the bottom which is usually where the health stuff was i just thought that was a really excellently paced level full of really clever like like i said vertical design to allow for a really interesting way to fight all the stuff the, and then a little bit of exploration as well. The level's literally called Grand Elevator. There's a bit at the yeah, beginning. There's a bit at the beginning of the game where you've got to drop through a hole and you land on top of an enemy and completely splat him. Yeah, I never did that again. I thought I was like, oh, that's a cool mm. part of the game. I was hoping to be able to use your sort of size and bulk because, like I say, you're like four, like I said, yeah, you're like this massive thing. Um, I wish they'd done a bit more of that, but it was one thing that they started with, and I just never, never had to engage with that again. I yeah, don't I don't think, yeah. I wonder if that was just like scripted rather than an actual ability that he has. I don't know. 
What did unless you... it was like yeah, using the L- the left trigger. To yeah, do that, yeah, well, there was there was often parts of the game where I'd li- like land very very close to someone, if not on them, and they yeah. just didn't they didn't react at all. So uh, yeah, I was a bit disappointed by that because I was expecting to be able to like go up high and jump off onto things and in amongst people. Yeah. That would have been really good fun. What did you think of the poison enemies? Oh fucking hell. Yeah, they, they were, were the worst. They were hard, and the it was they the, were. the giant the toad toads. thing. Yeah, the giant, yeah. the giant toad. Plague toads, is it? Plague yeah. Toads, yeah. So these guys are, if anyone's interested, these are from the Nurgle. So basically, the a lot of the chaos demons are made up of different things that is bad in humanity. So um, the Nurgle one is the sort of demon of rot and decay. Yeah, so that's why they're all poisoned and that's why they all look green and like these rotten beasts and if you see the models and stuff they'll have like their intestines coming out of their stomach and stuff yeah. like that yeah so okay. he's in the unclean one he was another one he was the first oh, boss that yeah. gave me a bit of t- a bit of toughness oh big time i i cheesed the life out of him i think i, I think i told you that via text you just, did yeah there was a there's a bit you could get up on top um i don't think you were meant to get there but i managed to like climb up on top and essentially the, his little mobs would just run off the side of the map and they couldn't get to you and then i just sat and like used up all my bullets shooting them in a corner i assume you just did it in the in the proper way did you Alex? oh i just ran around in circles over and over and over again and this is the thing that i was talking about where by the time i don't i'd actually get to find him i'd turn around and there'd be like 30 of his little blokes after me and i have to deal with them otherwise they're just gonna like chip away at my health 30 at a time and it was just never yeah so i just felt like i could never actually get to fight him I was always just running around trying to find him and then having to deal with his mob when as soon as I did. Um very frustrating. I kind of touched on it before, but how would this sort of I want to drill into this a bit more because I'm really fascinated by it, especially after going away and playing a bit of Proteus today. Um mm. how does this rank for you in comparison to like the the bigger pantheon of boomer shooters? Because I was looking through your Steam library and you've got a good few boomer shooters on there. I don't know how many you've played. But there's a few. Not on there, enough, and I didn't buy them, so they must be yours. Yeah, I've got Dusk on there. I'm pretty sure Dusk, which um, I've yeah, which is could, supposed to be more like Quake. That looks like it could be quite a lot of fun. Let me run through um, a couple of these, and you can tell me which one you've played. Let me open my Steam library quickly for you, because I've downloaded them and just not actually made it to them yet. So we've got Blood Flesh Fresh Supply. I remember we spoke about that a little bit before. Yeah, and Blood is actually a fresh apply. Is actually like a like a remaster of the original Blood, which I think is early two thousands game. So that one really did feel its age, and people are probably going to switch off if they're actually PC boomer shooter fans right now because I need controllers. I can't do <laughs> mouse and keyboard. I just don't have the space for it for a start. I sit on my sofa. I don't. I can't play yeah. with a mouse and a keyboard. So. Um, the controller support for that I found really finicky and really difficult to actually get to a point where the sensitivity wasn't either zero, aka it doesn't turn round or it turns around with the tiniest little touch. Um, that game is incredibly hard. It is it is very cool though. Um, dynamite, the dynamite in it is one of my favourite things about that game. He's got sticks of dynamite that he lights and just chucks at stuff. I think there's a um, so it's got like a wild west kind of. Um, that's right. That's this is Aesthetic the one I want. To it. I want to play because this has got a train level in it, isn't it? Yeah. And um, when I was googling the best train levels in video games about a year ago, that was one of the ones that kept coming up. Yeah, so that's one that I need, one. I need to um, get to. I, it's probably the one I would go back to again first to try and figure it out. But again, similar sort of thing. Big open levels, easy to get lost, needing to find keys. I mean, they're all going to have that. You've got dusk on here, which is, looks quite interesting as well. Yeah, Dusk is meant to be is, is one of the big boys. There's that and there's Ultra Kill, which I don't think I've bought yet, but is on my Steam wish list. That is those two are supposed to be like the the boomer shooters that everybody talks about. What about Hexen? Have you played that? Hexen's wicked, yeah. Um that is from right about the same time as original Doom. You're probably talking a couple of years later. I got it on the N sixty four, which is supposed to be a, ter- a terrible version of it. Um but the because the PC I remember when I was Going back and doing those N64 magazine looks when I were for Goomba Stomp, a lot of the reviews for Hexen on N64 were, were pretty scathing, sort of saying like Hexen is a great game, but on the N64 it's a terrible game. Mm. So um, that is a game I would really like them to remaster or at least even like bring out another one of. That would be quite cool. You know, Phil Spencer had a Hexen shirt on and the Xbox. He did, I noticed that, yeah. 
he got my he got me all excited for that. I thought, wow, this is a turn up for the books. Just thinking about these games right now, and here we go. Um, Hexen is he knows what he's, doing... he knows what he's doing though. He's not wearing. He's surely yeah. not wearing that t-shirt for nothing. Well, that's what I thought. I thought he's hinting at something. Maybe we'll find it in the PC show, but that wasn't there either. Um, but yeah, Hexen is basically like fantasy doom. So it's like magic and swords and cool that kind of thing. So I think you'd that you'd really enjoy that. Um, again, it's it's very very old. It's late nineties. So that that is like. No- does that count as a boomer shooter? I guess it does, right? Probably. Is it boomer shooters and modern boomer shooters? Is that what it is, or is it just games that are made now are boomer shooters? Who I think, knows? Uh, I don't. I don't know how it works. But yeah, Hexen's cool. It's a, it's a cool. This is another. I think this is probably becoming quite a common thing for me to say on podcasts. But it's a it's a cool genre that I haven't played enough of, and I probably need to play more of. Like I've obviously played. I've played the more recent Doom games. I mean, like I, I think yeah. even probably Wolfenstein, the the modern one, certainly would probably count in this sort of category of shooters. Um, it's a frantic, fast paced, run about and avoid things shooter, more so than the yeah. original Wolf Wolfenstein. For goodness sakes, yeah, um, yeah. And then there's yeah the Doom games. I've played Doom sixty four, Doom one and two, um, a bit of Proteus. I've played this game, so I guess I have played a few of them. Um, yeah. It's Tower of Guns. That's the game that's just come into my head. That was the game oh, I was talking okay. about earlier. It'll be on your. I think you've probably got that on PlayStation. If you've had a play, if you had PS Plus for any length of time, you'll have it on your PlayStation. Anyway, oh, okay. that's a fun game. Um, I think I think the the thing is is that like kind of like with this game, and I, I have felt it with most of the games like this that I have tried, is that the novelty does just wear off a little bit. Yeah, because they are very repetitive. But, they are like basically reusing the same sort of enemies it's kind of just different maps of the same thing over and over again you don't get massive set pieces you don't get cut scenes you don't get story progression you don't get missions it's just kill everything and so yeah I, maybe you just have to be in like the mood for it for longer than like a nice sort of throwback yeah that's the that's the struggle i think with making like a modern boomer shooter is to be like right well the previous ones are usually fun for like an hour and then after a while you're just like okay well that's enough now i've just been like my eyes are bleeding because i've just been shooting the shit out of everything and i've done nothing else but hold down the trigger and run around and get lost so i think trying to keep that engaging for a long amount of time is must be very difficult which is why so many of the games come out and are only a few hours long including this yeah that's and obviously it's even more so with the old ones which is why i kind of pick them up and go ah, yeah brilliant and then and then an hour later i'm like i'm the yeah, I don't know when I'm going to pick that up again. I think that's the that's a, that's sort of my key takeaway from it because I, I I went on an arc with this game. Like I started off playing, I was like, okay, this is interesting. It's something different. Quite enjoying myself, and then I got into a bit of a groove with it, and I was like, I love this. This is so much fun. It's when it's like I say, when it's when it everything clicks, it is it is amazing. And then by the end of it, I was like, this is a slog. Like I'm exhausted oh, really? playing this, and it was just yeah. like it was such an odd sort of. I don't know what you call it, like circle. I went through, like just like not sure, loved it, absolutely done with it. And like you're saying, like I think you were spot on when you said the game was a bit of a slog and it's only like five hours long. That was something wrong there. Mm. That it shouldn't be a slog. So which which kind of makes yeah. me think that like, and the one I'm going to keep coming back to is because it, it visually it doesn't look the same, but in in essence it's kind of the same game as is Doom 2016. And it, what that did is it brought the boomer shooter format but then also brought things with it. So like we were talking about having to backtrack and replenish your health, whereas Doom 2016 did the whole, if you're starting to lose health, if you become super aggressive and start melee yeah. killing enemies, it will start replenishing your health. And that that was just enough of a tweak on the format to make it interesting and keep you yeah. going. And it meant you it had keeps to keep it flowing. Keep, for- yeah. You're and- always like f- fighting enemies is the way that everything in that game works. As you yes. say, it's how you get ammo, it's how you get health, it's how you progress with the levels. And then there's some, there'll be maybe a bit of backtracking or exploration when you want to find like the secrets. Whereas in this one, getting the keys and having to run all the way back through a level where you just don't remember where the door was and there's no way for you to check, it's just not good game design. It's it's not it's not valuing the time of the player, which is something that you and I find really key to our yeah. enjoyment of games. Which is it kind of like leaves me with sort of mixed feelings on this because like you're saying like yeah. it's, it's not good game design but if they were to say to me it's designed to be like an old school shooter well it is yeah it really is. It. It, they've, they've nailed it does that make a fun game necessarily i mean 
yes, I know. I think is probably my takeaway from it. There's I had I had a great time with this game, but I also had some times where I was just like, oh god. What, is, I mean, I was dreading. Going? I was dreading that purge stuff by the end. Like every time mm. I came into a big square room, I thought, "Oh god, I'm going to have to run around this room for ages, scrabbling for health and stuff," because there's just going to be so many enemies. Like I much preferred like when they got the level traversal right. Like remember that level where it's got those massive cannons that just like enormous in the yeah. snow bit at the beginning. Yeah. Like that was a that was something cool to look at. That's like a cool visual mm. spectacle because again. If you're going to make a game with really scaled down graphics where it's all very like pixely and bitty, that's going to get boring to look at after a while as well, unless you do something imaginative with it. And they kind of stopped that other than the lift towards the end. Like they just, they just really kind of stopped it. It was just like inside dungeony type levels when you get into the hell part of it. And And then that's not helping carry me through the slog of the gameplay or getting lost because everything looks the fucking same. At least in the earlier levels, you're actually like you're flying through this linear action romp, which is way more fun. Give me like a couple of enemies spawning in as I'm making my way through it. Absolutely fine. I'll lay waste to all of them. But when I'm having to just circle around a room and strafe shoot for like 10 minutes, then get lost in an endless maze of the same Browns, that is where the game and all of these games fall short, unless you're going to really do something spectacular at the end of all of it, which this game rarely did. It was just a boss. Yeah, I totally. I I could not agree more with you on that. Is it? And I actually felt like the the sort of day like you're saying the environments became less interesting as the game went on because yeah. you started off in this big open area. They had massive set pieces. They had like interesting skyboxes, and then yeah. you just go inside caves for like three yeah. hours. And these caves are narrow. They all look the same. Trying to figure out your way, and then you move from a cave into an industrial building that is full of narrow corridors as well. And mm-hmm. yeah, I. Almost felt like I was going to say the game felt like it was back to front, but if it was if it was back to front, I'm not sure I would have got past it open in a couple of hours because yeah, like, this, this is not. dull, this is not interesting. Whereas by time it sort of ramped up, I was I was I was on the hook, so I had to keep going. Um, talking about things that were keeping you on the hook, how what was you? How was your feeling on the weapons? I think largely I quite liked them. They were fun. They yeah. felt they felt weighty in a way that I really appreciated. That shooting the bolt gun felt like you were shooting this big, hefty piece of machinery. Did I read somewhere that that's supposed to be like a mini rocket launcher bolted to a pistol or something? Um, there is something about it. Um, the only information I could give you is remember the size of a space marine. So if the gun is going yeah. to look normal on him, think of the size of the gun that he's shooting. Yeah. I think that has to go down as one of the best like default weapons like or first guns I've ever had in the game. Yeah. Like such a viable gun that they they, they clearly want to make the focal point of the whole game, which is why you you'll probably bring this up in a minute like the the upgrades or the the ammo limited upgrades that you can get just for the bolt gun where it fires different types mm-hmm. of ammo. Um really cool way to keep it relevant when the time you get your arsenal full of like i don't even know how many you have by that point uh 10 guns maybe eight or ten six eight guns apparently yeah um obviously they give you some of the you know the basic tropes of it you get like a proper ar you get a shotgun really liked the shotgun as well even though it seemed to be downward red on every single enemy in the entire game (laughs) <laughs> everything you'd be shooting those little frog things that you'd be like down red but they'd still explode in one shot so i was like oh well i'm yeah. just gonna keep going yeah really odd the plasma gun was cool uh did a lot of damage to you like splash damage that mm-hmm. i frequently did to myself um but some of the later game ones they gave you i really enjoyed that one that was like a basically just an orange laser that just melted people was good the grav the, gun the grav was gun. good um, there's melt gun and then there's vengeance yep. launcher as well. That was like probably the green laser beam thing at the end. That was the graph gun, the laser beam thing. Okay. Yeah, the, the the that one you just said the launcher was the one that was like above the bolt gun on the up on your uh, D pad, and that was yeah, like firing yeah, okay. like those like grenade. Like, that, I, was, it was like I kept forgetting I had that. explosives or something. It was, yeah, yeah, right, okay. I quite like that because you could get quite a lot of distance on that, and it almost mm-hmm. like it was almost like yeah, they were sticky grenades or they were sticking into the enemy. Yeah. And then exploding. I really liked that one that shot like rings of fire. What was that one on the the right D pad? On next to the shotgun. Melt gun, probably. Not the, 
Yeah, because that one also shot through um, surfaces as well, which yeah. I didn't realize till it showed it on a loading screen. That was a really cool gun, but hardly any ammo for it. Mm. Yeah, the, my favorite gun was, well, the bolt gun because it was so fun to shoot. And I loved it when you shot like a, a sort of regular enemy because it, it would just eviscerate them. And I just really enjoyed mowing through yeah. people like that. Um, my favorite trail on the bullets for that as well. So yeah. you could actually see them sort of flying through the air. The gun I would always look for in one of those purge areas is was basically the heavy bolter. If I had like ammo yeah. for that, I, I just that thing was would just melt through things. I just like love running chaos space marines with that thing out because you just just unload and then they'd just be gone because like it it would shoot if you're again because you're in like this tight space you'd be shooting down the corridor and very often you wouldn't be able to see who you were shooting and then you'd stop oh, shooting just and there'd so just much... be nothing left. You're like, oh well, that's dealt with. <laughs> that was really good. Yeah, I think I lost. I lost you there. Yeah, you're back. I I got a yeah. Yeah, just like a corridor full of like viscera Mm -hmm. that you're left with. Yeah, yeah. Again, like the good thing about these guys, the chainsaw, the bolt gun, the shotgun, the plasma gun, the the heavy bolter, the melter gun, grav cannon, and vengeance launcher. These are all guns that are in in the game, which is which is a nice sort of nod. You you spoke about being damaged by the plasma plasma gun that's a sort of um at least within my group of friends it's an infamous gun that if you roll a one it'll do damage to you um because it'll right, sort okay. of bounce back on you and um, which i thought was it was nice that they sort of tied that in in some way into the game which was quite i enjoyed Definitely. it um yeah we, t- we spoke briefly about the power-ups apparently there are seven power-ups in the game alex i did not absorb that playing through the game no. whatsoever so we'll run through a couple of them we can talk about maybe the ones that are interesting um, there's the Emperor's Visage. That's the one that looked a bit like a Caesar crown that you picked up. Oh, yeah. And um, the effect of this one was uh, Visions... Well, this is the in-world effect. Visions of the Emperor bolster your contempt. Receive a huge contempt boost. Um, oh, and, yeah. Um, so your contempt... Which we didn't know what contempt was for a while, did we? No. Um, but your contempt is... Set... Contempt must do some sort of damage then that we were mi- missing out on here because until contempt falls below 200, contempt maximum. That I, I think I think it's your armor. Okay. Because at, at one point he said, my shield is my disgust, which I loved as a line. Um, and yeah, I think it's just your, your hatred for everything is how you shield yourself from there. Bollocks. I don't know. Bollocks. Yeah. We get the Aura of Doom, which is like the fist holding the knuckle dusters. Yeah. This one, increase your damage and reduces incoming damage for 30 seconds. Yeah. Loved that. If you found that in the middle of a purge area, that was yeah. so good. Really good. And um, we've got the Assault Doctrine, which is, pff, I don't know what that looks like. It's it's like wings with a, oh, it's wings with a chainsaw. And um, this powers up your chainsaw to cut them into pieces. I never used a chainsaw enough, I did, so I probably did, did not, not know that's what that was doing. Yeah, yeah. So I I did not make um make good use of that one. That's you know, like the old um, Berserker thing in Doom, isn't it? Where he mm-hmm. just gets his fists out and starts punching the shit out of everybody. Talking about things I didn't use nearly enough, and I didn't even use it at all until you until you spoke about it, and then I probably didn't use it enough after that. Was the LB button that does like a charge? Yeah, that was quite that was fun, but I didn't use it enough, and I didn't use it to great effect because my brain just wasn't in the flow of making it making it work. But you did, yeah. But that was that was good for like, yeah. Again, for those little dickheads running after you, know, all the mob enemies. You hit LB, you can get rid of about five or six of them. He just smashes through all of them. Um, the munitions boon. This increases your maximum ammo until the end of a mission. Oh, I thought it just gave you max ammo. I thought it just maxed out your ammo, but nope. That's that's quite a good one. Um, the machine spirit. This one powers up your weapons. Uh, machine spirits can be unpredictable. Every weapon is affected differently. So let's have oh, a look. Oh, is that the green thing? Yes. Yes, you're right. Um, yeah, so that's the thing where it piles up the weapon that you've got equipped at the time you pick it up. So if you're not paying attention, you yes. might pick up yeah one that's not So this um, used that often. GamerRant.com has a nice little... So it says, The upgrades afforded by Machine Spirit are undeniably beneficial, albeit tricky to identify and use effectively. Players need to understand how this pickup affects each weapon and under what circumstances particular armaments should receive enhancements. Um, it doesn't actually say what it does. Oh, so here we go. It can be a, so it can be an improvement to the weapon's strength, 
or a quickened fire rate or ricocheting bullets that bounce off surfaces. This relic turns even the humblest guns into weapons of mass destruction. So it seems to be like a random, it'll randomly upgrade something or add a add mm. something to it. It's a cool little sort of yeah, spanner in the works, potentially. Even there, they've said that it's not always apparent what's actually going yeah. on. So that's a bit of a shame. That it doesn't kind of make it a little bit more obvious what you've actually unlocked when you pick it up. Yeah. There's an infinite ammo one, which is obviously infinite ammo for 30 seconds, which is useful. Yeah. I often yeah. found that and then didn't get to use it <laughs> because I couldn't find it in any shoot I found. Yeah, yeah, that's annoying as well. The 30 second timer things, if you find it once you've cleared out an area, that's really annoying. And then the opposite side of that is obviously they, they give you so, you know, towards the end of the game, especially they give you these really cool guns that do crazy shit. And then you're often not having any ammo for it. Like I said, the melter gun probably could do about 30 bullets, which is takes up five at a time. Mm -hmm. so you get six shots out of it. Yes, if you had too much of it, you would be OP. But I often found that I was either like not able to find any ammo for something or just constantly getting more and more ammo. And it kept saying ammo full, ammo full, ammo full, like in the little feed down in the corner. It didn't feel like the balance for that was quite right. Yeah, I agree. Um, and then this uh, site's got the the best power up being the the vortex grenade, which was good. Oh well, yeah, big fan. If of that. you wasted that on a normal enemy, then you're yeah, you'd be livid. I think I actually reloaded the save once when I pressed it by accident. Did you? Yeah, because it you could change grenades with B, but I kept forgetting. I I must have pressed B by accident and threw that at like two um two cultists and thought, well, that's a waste because that normally does a boss in in one go or at least does like a big big chunk of their health. So yeah, I reloaded the save once when I did it by accident. The um, where was I going with that? Where have I got to? What about the bolt gun special bullets? I swear there was, they existed at some point. It's the the one I was hoping to find, and we've gone through what it claims to be all the power ups here. Is it was like you'd pick it up, and it would make the bullets red, or purple, or, or green. Pur yeah, yeah. The purple uh, one, I swear, was what at one point was called something like dragon ammo or some shit. There's one here that I'm not finding. Um, in fact, it's maybe secrets. Because there's one that was like the it was like the bottom of a bottom of a big ammo case. Hmm. Do you know what I'm talking about? Is that I thought that was the weapons boon, but maybe not. It didn't look like the picture that I've got here. Oh, okay. Let's see if I can find it. So I wonder, so there are as I'm looking through this list here, there are different types of gun upgrades that you can find. So for in, in weapon upgrades, so there's um oh and different types of ammunition that the bolt gun can come with. So I wonder if this That's is what right. it is we're finding. So there's the Kraken bolts, there's That's dragon what it fire was. bolts, no. vengeance. Oh dragon bolts. fire, yeah. So um you also get hellfire bolts, but the dragon bolts are basically turns the bolt guns into incendiary rounds. Mm -hmm. so yeah i think there's a lot of variation here that you can get with the guns which i quite enjoyed i never felt yeah. that i was getting bored of the weapons at any point i thought there was plenty to offer and then even within the weapons themselves there was lots of variations so like there was obviously the upgrades you could get and then these these special upgrades one thing that i was never clear about was at the end of each act you just lost all your weapons yeah, i couldn't figure dumb. out why that was happening no i didn't like that at all there was no need for that there's no like I say, it doesn't fit into the fact that the story is supposed to be you making your way from one point to no. another and then suddenly just losing all your guns, even though you've just fought a boss. I didn't, yeah, didn't care for that at all. I wonder. But I like that. Like I say, I, I like I like where it was making you have stronger weapons against certain enemies mm -hmm. to keep you cycling through the arsenal and not just like sticking to one gun. Because I I enjoyed having to use all of them and cycle through and remembering. Like I kept forgetting to use that grenade launcher thing loads and then i found it really useful for yeah. bosses after a while again even though it always said it was weak against them it wasn't no weird yeah i find that quite a lot um but yeah i, I actually wondered at some point when i was playing this I was like if i missed a story beat in each act i'm playing as a different space marine but that didn't seem mm. to be true either so 
No. Yeah, it was just really. No, because really... it did seem to sort of follow on with the cuts, a very brief cutscene afterwards, didn't it? Where he tells you the next mission, like it would say, "You've made your way into the inner sanctums now. It's time to go take out the sorcerer once and for all." So I remember thinking to myself, "Okay, definitely still the same guy. Definitely yeah. still the same day." <laughs> it's, it's the very next thing that he does but he's now got no guns bizarre did you make ever make good use of the y button alex that does a random taunt yeah quite a lot not to enemies though usually normally when i killed them all i'd say something but that's how i found when he said my shield is my disgust so mm. yeah so it's a yeah doesn't really what do a anything. weird thing though it's a weird thing but it's, it was voiced by a guy called Yeah, he's it. been in some stuff, hasn't he? He's been—he's like an actual actor, isn't he? He's an actual voice actor, yeah. Um, and I've lost him. Yeah, I found this earlier when I was looking it up as well. He's in my notes. <laughs> How have I managed to lose him? Oh, here, here's his wiki page. There's a guy called Rahu Kohli. Mm. It's for, I was trying to work out because I was listen to other people talk about this game and apparently he's quite well known in the community so he's a bit like a less famous Henry Cavill and he's actually quite a notable Warhammer fan as well as being a voice actor so let's have a look at kind of things he's been in he's been in Hol- well, Holby City Red vs Blue uh, the Harley <laughs> Quinn TV show Rocketeer, Midnight Club he's not a massive um, oh he's been in he plays Faz Chitani in Gears 5. And he's also in Fortnite oh, right. and Ghostbusters. And... Hate that guy. <laughs> um, so yeah, he's, he's sort of a a well-known guy within the community, which I thought was a nice a nice touch to be able to add him to. Sure, yeah, absolutely. Um, let's have a look what else I forgot. I've covered that, I've covered that. Alex, do you want to have a stab at guessing the metacritic score for this game um well when i was looking at the wikipedia page for a little bit of brief uh research before we did this recording i noticed that it said something along the lines of it's received mixed to favorable reviews so i was surprised because obviously i leapt into it thinking well everyone loves this you showed me that GameSpot review that absolutely like lauded over Mm -hmm. it and i saw a lot of other people on youtube saying they liked it um so I'm going to guess that it's 73. Oh, he's nailed it. Right on the head. How do I keep doing this? It's an absolute Metacritic king. You've just got Metacritic yeah. plugged into your veins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. I think that feels about right for me, though, because it was a good game. Yes. Um, I enjoyed my time with it. I I do think it overstayed its welcome because it just never varied itself up at some point. And it's, yeah. it's like I said before, it's it's way to ratchet up difficulty and, and keep interest in the player was just to give you more of everything more enemies yeah. and increase their health as time went on and i think games need to have a little bit more than that in 2023 but again exactly if, if they're looking to evoke the classic boomer shooter they've made a classic boomer shooter i just don't think they've moved the genre on in any way but again they don't they're have not to. Trying to they're not they? trying yeah. to no, so that's... no one tries to in this yeah it just seems to know what it is and be quite happy to sit in its lane. And I think there's something for that. And I think if you're really into this type of game, this is one that you'll probably pick up and have a great time with. Um, yeah. It's funny we've ended up playing it because, as we've spoken about, there's plenty other of these sort of shooters out there that we maybe would have had a better time with. But I don't know. Yeah, I don't we know. may have to revisit this genre at some point yeah. in the next year or so. I didn't have a bad time with it. I just didn't have a an utterly mind blowing time with it either. Yeah, yeah, it just really petered out. I, like I, I started it immediately thinking, "Yeah, man, this, this yeah. is fucking awesome." Yeah, and then towards the end, just oh god, not another game, not another level. Like, please let this be over soon. I can't do it. <laughs> I'm Which to... I think, if you pace yourself better with it, maybe you know you just take it as like, oh, "I'm going to jump in and have a bit of a go on that for a yeah. while." Rather than try and slog through the whole campaign like we did, um, maybe there's there's something in that. But I do find I fall off these games a lot, as I said earlier. And I, I without this podcast, I probably would have fallen off this one as well. Once I going. think I would just have stopped. Really, dreary, I would have got halfway yeah. through and fell off. I think if we hadn't been podcasting yeah. about this, it would have been where I would have gone. Um, I'll try to look through like rough 
some little like synopsis reviews to see what you think of them. So IGN said that they disliked the enemy AI. They said that it made certain encounters trivial. I saw that. For many people, especially challenge seekers, the ball- the, the brain dead AI is where the game will risk losing them. I don't think the AI is supposed to be anything but that. Most of them are little tiny monsters that are just going to rush you and gank- be gank squads. And then you've got guys just there to be fodder. It's supposed to be a, it's supposed to be a pretty much relentless power trip. Mm-hmm. You're supposed to be eradicating all this evil. But um, I wouldn't. Say, I, I don't know what they're expecting from that from the AI. There, it's, it's supposed to be like Doom AI, which is just they stand there and you shoot the shit out of them. Yeah, I mean, they, like, they overwhelm it, you after a while. The only example I can think of is when those mobs were running off the map to try and get yeah. them running to their death. But like, they yeah. couldn't have got me. So they, other than that, they could have just stood still. Um, I never like. I can see what they're meaning. It's not complex. It's not like The Last of Us no. AI, but it. it it doesn't need to be, and it wasn't trying to be. So yeah, it's Come almost on. like yeah. Most of the time, they're sort of just placed in areas for you to run through and smoothly just like mop up as you as you go along. They're just supposed to be like almost like a game of whack a mole where they're just there as set pieces to your gunfire. But um, yeah, I, I yeah, there are elements. I remember where I would I, there would be times where I would like walk around a corner and some of those little dudes would just be like walking into a wall. <laughs> like facing away from me and just thinking what the fuck has happened here Someone th- <laughs> something has broken you pal but um, it's not something I would label as a negative against the game because I don't really I don't expect it to be any better than that and I don't know if I would want to because what's, they're just supposed to rush you, everyone's supposed yeah. to find you where you are and come at you and that's yeah. why you're supposed to be keeping on your toes. That's the point of it, I think. I'm not overly thinking about having some sort of tactical battle with these enemy AI. Yeah. They're just not that smart. You're right. They're, they that's seem crazy. to be built to rush me, and that's literally it. There's no... <laughs> yeah. Or stand still from a distance and shoot me on a platform yeah. that they can't move on anyway. Um, yeah. Polygon <laughs> said that the visuals captured the essence of 40k, which I probably agree with that. The Abyss yeah. of Chaos looks downright disturbing, um, and it even captured an old school, th- captured it through an old school lens, which is yeah, it's great. I think visually, other, yeah. I had the odd issue, like I was saying, visually moving around the world in terms of trying to figure yeah. out where I was supposed to go. But in terms of just if you were to give me a scene, and like we're saying, the sky boxes at the start of the game, I think they look great. Oh yes, they do. Actually, that has reminded me though. I had a lot of performance issues with my. Oh game. yeah, I, I meant to ask. You, I even wrote that down. I meant to ask you that because I didn't have any. What were you getting? That's interesting. Uh, uh, there'll be there'll be moments where the, the the game would completely pause for like three seconds. So. Oh, I did get that. Yeah, I did get that. N- You're right. Not necessarily in an entirely busy moment either. Sometimes it was almost like it was just loading. Yeah. And it just paused the that. whole Forgot game to that. load stuff in. Um. And if we're talking about like the way that the game looks, like I have no issue with that. We've talked about when things get a bit muddy towards the end, and you just everything looks the same. Yes, but the actual visual style I thought was really cool. The music, however, I thought was fucking garbage. I absolutely hated it. And I've seen a lot of people say they really liked it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, this is another note that I'd written down to ask you about because I'd say that one of the things that people kept calling out was how good the soundtrack was. But yeah. I remember you saying you weren't a fan of it. Yeah, and maybe it's just because I I played this mostly at night, so didn't want to wake baby slash wife, so I had headphones on. Um, But I think I would only ever really notice, like, when, almost in the down moments where somebody, it just sounded like somebody just leant on a synth. And I thought every time I've stopped <laughs> to pay attention to this music, it just, just it's just going, wow, and then it would go a little bit like, Poor, like gothic sort of um you know gospel chorusy there'd be some kind of like chanting but then i'm thinking well when i'm listening to mick gordon absolutely shred the fuck out of a guitar for doom this is like what is this trying to be i just thought it was awful i, I didn't get why people thought that was so good it was just a noise and it was just like looping and relentlessly boring i just yeah it was winding me up because you can't notice it when there's guns going off and enemies screaming at you so like i say in the moments where i'm lost and I'm walking around the same bit again to try and find the yellow fucking door. And I'm hearing, no, no, no. <laughs> just fuck off. <laughs> Don't get it. Don't get it. What about you? What did you think? I mean, you obviously thought it was better than I did. 
do you know what? Really, really strangely, I cannot recall the music, which means... I have mm. just not absorbed any of it whatsoever. I think I was <laughs> perhaps so like wide-eyed trying not to catch PTSD from playing the, the difficult sections yeah. of the game that I just my brain wasn't capable of absorbing the music as well. It never jumped out at me either good nor bad. I w- I will say though that I'm not a particular like music in sound design only tends to jump out to me when it's bad. So it obviously Fair. didn't offend me. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm not really much help with that, I'm afraid. And I don't know why. Because <laughs> you were talking about the music and I was thinking, did I play this game with a podcast on? I was like, no, no, I didn't. I, had, I often, I had feel, I often thought like I really wanted to do that though. It's like, I can't hear this anymore. It's, it's like, it's driving me insane. I need <laughs> some different sound. Yeah, it, um, it just didn't, didn't register with me at all. I think I was just too concentrating on the action unfolding the screen. It's funny that you say about being like wide eyed and stuff. Um, Cause I remember, I remember multiple times and I don't know if that's because I'm getting older, if there's something horrifically wrong with me, I'm not going to look it up because that's what I would have done yeah, in the past. Do it, Alex, do there were multiple times when I'd, I'd have finished this game and I was going to bed and my eyes would be like red and bloodshot. <laughs> and I was just like, Oh my God, this game has fucked my eyes from just like, con- as you said, constantly just like intense, concentration and staring at these horrible pixels and flashing lights at fucking 10 o'clock at night in the dark it did me it did it i think it was detrimental to my health this video game as the video games are it's my ocular health anyway yeah good point (laughs) as um steve said on the uh the video game hall of fame podcast when he said how much he hated dance dance revolution i play video games to gain weight not to lose it so um (laughs) i guess yeah none of them are good for us really have you seen people play Dance Dance Revolution who are like genuinely good at it? In the Japan, ones, yeah. The ones that like lean back on the that is that's not dancing. It's kind no, of river dancing. No. It is, yeah. Yeah. It's really weird that that's basically that's the optimum way to play it and it is in no way resembles any kind of dance ever. No. It's like standing on hot coals. <laughs> Something is really weird. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I guess it's dance in the way that they used to say in like a mafia movie when they get a gun on you, right? They're like, dance, fool! And they just yeah. shoot your feet. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's, that. the, that's what it Maybe the Yakuza in. made the game. Yeah. You, you're going to have a... You've got a good year coming up with Yakuza games. Fucking right. Yeah, can't wait. That's the, they, they, know what they, they know what they're doing now. They, they've sussed it. They've done the, the Capcom jobby of we have one part of the series that's always going to be the old school brawler beat em up stuff and then we've now got this turn-based rpg version and we'll just keep alternating them so no one ever gets annoyed everyone always gets one or two if they like them both it's like the old resi 8 versus resi what's the key differences between these things like why have they got spin-offs um so they stuck with the combat mechanics were as weird in one of them they stuck with that That's right. So yeah, the combat mechanics from the original Yakuza games from all the way from like zero to six was always like, you know, the the sort of based off of, I don't know, like Shenmue style virtual fighter-y brawling where you're just smashing buttons and it's a real-time action fighter. And then for Yakuza 7, they just decided to make it a turn-based JRPG that's like Dragon Quest. And that had a new protagonist. That was the first game that Kiryu wasn't the main character in. So they've now decided, right, any any games that move on in the with the new character Ichiban, they will be turn-based RPGs. But they had the Judgment games, which had the old style fighting in it. And now they've done this Kiryu game that they announced at the, whatever, whichever one it was, the PlayStation one, I think. And I can't remember what that's called now. But that is going to just be like, that's like a sort of a spin-off side game. Right, okay. And then the main game where you just saw Ichiban fucking naked in Hawaii or wherever he was. That will be like the next proper Yakuza 8 where it's a JRPG again. We were, to- we were talking. A great place to jump in. We were talking tough bosses uh, at some points during this podcast. Tell you what, that boss in Yakuza 0 with a tattoo on his back. Oh my God, that I find that hard. There's another one I find yeah. tough. They, um, the, the, that was the weird thing about those games is that, like, every normal enemy in the game was pathetic, and you'd get like 
that you there would never be any difficulty spike when you're walking through the streets and you're getting attacked by these mobs you would just batter the shit out of them by like hitting them with a bike or whatever and then a boss fight they'd be blocking they'd be doing grappling moves like the bosses were always just so hard had so much health that um yeah they were a real like difficulty spike out of absolutely nowhere yakuza 3 is the worst for that they are so hard in those games and that i think the guy you're talking about you probably fight him about six times in in zero. Oh, great have you yeah. finished with the back in time yakuza game yes I, did, I, did, I finished that uh a moment now, a month ago or so that was really good i really enjoyed that i think um, the old samurai one i don't know if i'll ever get there i don't think that's that's one i'm happy to let slide but yeah yeah. Zero is the one I need to make a start on. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime you want to do that, I'm here for it. I need to do it. Next time we've got a space in the list, we'll add it because then because that'll make me play it. And I know I know because I've probably played about seven or eight hours of it. I do like it, mm. and I've got no idea why mm. I stopped. I think I fell down a hole of playing that baseball mini game for hours. Yeah, and hours. I think I remember you saying that. There must have been something else that we played for this, or a new release came out, and you just it's almost certainly something for this that's distracting me from it. Yeah. But I don't remember what. Have you anything else to talk about this game? I think we've fairly covered it and we've we've sort of wrung the wrung the life out of what was quite a short game running the same yeah. things over and over again. Yeah, it just um came out of absolutely nowhere for me. I don't yeah. I, I don't follow anything to do with Warhammer and I'm now looking at Space Marine two and thinking, Yeah, I could I am, more with this. I think we might have to add Space Marine potentially see what's on the list when it when it comes up. But yeah, Space Marine Two yeah. looks excellent and it looks very gears like. So that will tie it into really something does. else that we do. Yeah, but um, was really in the mood for this kind of a shooter. Um, it's a nice break, and, wasn't uh, it? Yeah, and uh, just one of the most violent and gory games I've ever played, and mm. I loved it. That part of it was so good. Never got tired of just smashing tiny little enemies into a million pieces with a shotgun shot just incredible violence in this game well again when you think of warhammer you think of like you know neckbeard guys in a basement in a games workshop shop you don't think that this is what's going to come from that that's what they're all pretending they're playing is like the most violent shooter i've ever seen yeah they are that's that's what's all happening in their heads yeah so don't ever upset a warhammer nerd because they have they have got dark corners of their mind they can go to (laughs) yeah absolutely which I suppose brings us on that bombshell to the end of another episode of the Winners You Podcast. If you liked what you heard, and even if you didn't, why not give our numbers a bump by subscribing to our podcast on your podcast feed of choice? Or if you prefer to imbibe your podcast in a visual format, you can head over to YouTube and search for a Winners You Podcast where you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. If the podcast isn't enough for your bi-weekly dose of a Winner Is You chatter, you can also follow us on Twitter at Winner Is You Pod and you can even send us an email to tell us how wrong we are about our gaming opinions by writing to a Winner Is You Pod at gmail.com. Alex and I also have Twitter at David Smiley One and Super Thrillix. Any housekeeping before we get going? What's next up? I, I think you, you did tell me what this was this week, but I'll let you tell the folks what's next on your other podcast coming up. Um, well, we did we did the we've just done the video game Hall of Fame like tenth episode where we all picked a game each that we'd previously nominated and then forced it into the Hall of Fame so that without putting it to a Twitter poll because they typically get ruined by weirdos. Um, so that's uh, do you? I don't know if you actually listened to that show. You, you've not mentioned it to me, so I'm assuming you've got some I've, backlog I, or something else. It's it's on my backlog. I've got them yeah. all downloaded, waiting to be listened to. <laughs> um, that was quite a fun episode. We 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 after we all put our own, you know, they went back and did the games that we wanted to put in. I made sure Mario World got in because it was robbed in the first episode anyway. Um, we then like we all picked another category that we're going to go for coming up. So we've got like four of those. I think we're going to do something like controversial games is one we're going to be looking at, which I'm really struggling to think of anything other than what was the one Postal I was going to pick. is the obvious one for controversial games or that Rockstar one that got banned, Manhunt. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess there's different ways to like, um, you know, what's the word, define. Yeah, that's uh, where the fun comes, I guess. Controversial. Yeah. Um, I, I'm on, I'm on my phone. So, oh, hang on. It might be in my notes, actually. Is I guess a video notes? game that did something you wouldn't be oh, expecting yes. it to do. 
Yeah. Uh, Doom. Oh, Doom. Doom was pretty controversial. Yeah. Wind I've also got. <laughs> I've got. Yeah. Yeah. I've got as a. Um, that's a fucking shout, actually, thinking about it. I got Stick of Truth as well because I forgot they had that whole scene over here where it was like. Oh, they cut EU. it out in Europe, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. Then we're going to do left, Hack and Slash. Left should left the EU before that came along. Yeah. That's why that's why I would have voted for Brexit on the fucking on that day, day when I got there, yeah. yeah. I was so annoyed yeah. that I was being censored. That was bizarre. I was yeah, I was livid. When yeah. Um then we're doing hack and slash. Uh, if I pick anything other than bayonetta, I think I'll have had a brain hemorrhage. Um <laughs> Open World. Fuck me, open world is really hard. That I've because even like you know, there's a lot of open world games that suck that I don't care for anymore, like anything Ubisoft do, basically. But there was a real boom period for open world games where they were everything. Mm-hmm. And you think even back to games like Crackdown, I fucking loved Crackdown. Crackdown was so good. I, how good and is, how good was the world in that? Right, and yeah. the powers and the climbing the towers and stuff. They made a fun, like honestly, made a fun game just running about collecting orbs for God's sakes. Exactly. Exactly. And then you think about you know. Fallout 3 blew my mind when I first mm-hmm. played that, but it, and then t- does Tears of the Kingdom count? I mean, Probably, yeah, I could yeah. think about open world games for, for a long time and, and still like Witcher 3, is that great because of the open world itself or is it great because of the story? I don't know what it's I'm tough. Pick. It's probably great because of the story, but then in, in its, I mean, I don't know if it's as, as impressive these days, but in its time, it was impressive because you could walk from one end of the map to the other end of the map and not see a loading screen like you just wouldn't, yeah. wouldn't get that in a, a game so those eras yeah that's very very true that one's going to be really tough and then part we're doing party games i uh fusion frenzy I, for me i think i might i mean again depends how you define what a party, Mario game, party, is. You, a party game yeah you could you could probably put smash bros that probably counts yeah i guess warioware games maybe yeah yeah uh but yeah so we did all of this and then we have now put a poll up on the at vg underscore hof twitter feed where we're asking people to tell us what category we're going to do for the very next episode we were really hoping that games with turnips was going to win based off of when simon on the podcast just said that mario 2 is the greatest game about turnips and uh we decided like maybe oh yeah we'll do that as a category one day games with turnips and I looked it up on Giant Bomb because Giant Bomb actually has a page of turnip games and there's fucking loads of games in that list. So we were hoping turnip games was going to win, but it doesn't look like it's going to. I think it's going to end up being bloody strategy games, which oh. is like right at the bottom of my wheel. It's not yeah, even in that's... my wheelhouse. Yeah. Um, I was playing Nuts and... Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. I saw today, that, yeah. I messaged uh... you earlier saying your Twitch feed was really random because you're playing like GTA 4 and Nuts and Bolts. I was so like, I've, what I've year started, is this? Yeah, I've started playing GTA 4 in my own time because I was like, I've been looking at this for a while. I was like, I want to play GTA 4 again. I'm just going to have to force it. So I was just like, right. I'm I gonna... think... Sorry, go on. I was, yeah, I'm just going to have to force it. So I was like, right, I'm going to play it. So it was like a fiver. So I went and bought it. And then um, I was like, right, well, it's... I don't like to start a new pod game before we record about the one we've just finished because it starts to yeah, mess with my brain. So it's like, right, how could I play something podcast related? Because that's what I usually do if I stream at lunchtime without actually playing a podcast game. So I was like, well, Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts because we're playing Banjo-Kazooie next. So I played that and there's turnips in like the first scene. <laughs> ah, okay. Around okay. about his house, there's just turnips walking around the place. Yeah, they're supposed that the giant bomb says there's turnips in Banjo Kazooie, but I think it's an onion, which is the, the weirdest sentence I've ever said, to, <laughs> like, and committed to recording. Um, but I do believe it is not a turnip; it is an onion. So we'll see. But um, GTA Four, I think that I think that city that they've got in that game is mm-hmm. arguably the best they've ever done. Like that version of New York that they created for that so game good. is spectacular it's so good and I, I was sitting thinking i think i was i was like obviously just chatting to myself but i was like the story in gta 4 is good it's not it is not good i had to give myself a slap the story is not good but what is as good as any the gta games is their characters are just so fun like watching yeah. the cutscenes and watching these characters interact about nothing is entertaining and that's what's yeah. fun about that game like the you're right the, then you're right their their depiction of new york is spot on Looks wise, it's start. It's really looking at its age. Like 
yeah at night it just turns into a black and white game i think that just seems to how yeah. just like turn the sepia up or down however that does it just goes black and white and then it's like it just kind of looks the same but it's still a fun game I'm having fun with it i don't know how how far i'll get through it but i've been wanting to play it for mm. a long time so i was like nah i'm just gonna do it yeah i was i was pleased to see you doing that because I, I, I know you've been talking about wanting to get back into that again that's the only gta game i've ever actually finished i've never finished any of the other ones yeah oh my god i think the only of the 3D ones, I think I've done them all, and I've done GTA 5 more than twice. Wow. Okay. Oh, I suppose Red, if you count Red Dead Redemption, I've done Red Dead Redemption 1. Oh, yeah. It's a fucking open world game. See, it's so hard. Yeah. <laughs> that actually, and another thing, like I know we've gone way off topic now, but like one thing that got me really sad today as i realized how good the DLC for Rockstar Games used to be. Like The DLC for, the, for Red Dead was awesome undead nightmare still never so played good that. Oh, i think i need to play that it's so good and then there's lost in the damned for gta 4 and then there's the ballad of gay tony both of those are epic and then yes. you just never did anything with red dead 2 or gta 5 apart Not from where the money is stuff. anymore is it no yeah which is a real shame because they were real highlights mm. did you uh uh, while we're completely off topic and I don't know why this has just come into my head but have you seen that they're going to fucking try and put NFTs in Madden and FIFA have you no, seen that what are they doing, oh, what are they doing? There's right. a, it seems like Nike didn't they're get the memo cards. they're going to be like helmets in Madden that have got like a bit of pink on it or something I thought we were over this now we NFTs are it's just gone. like no one seems to have told because it's Nike they've got this like swoosh dot Nike or something and it's like that's their NFTs, but they're not calling it NFTs at all. They are because they've got ID numbers on the things that you, the, the digital shit that you're going to buy for FIFA or whatever, you know, different colored boots for Ronaldo. But um, yeah, they, they, they know what they're selling, but they don't want to say it because they know that NFTs have got such a bad reputation. But their Twitter feed for it, for their announcing it, like it's all the crypto bros, like, oh, this is game changing. It's, it's a mess out there. It is a mess out there. <laughs> Stay in, Sila, everybody. Stick with us in our echo chamber of hating everything that's not what we're talking about right now. Start playing Badger Kazooie. Yes. That's the next episode. I fucking can't wait. It's finally here. 65 it's episodes. We've been doing this podcast and it's taken us 65 yeah. episodes to do it. Yeah. <laughs> and all the hundreds more we did in the past. We've, we've still never really spoken about it until now. And we've just done it. Right. And we'll have done Diddy Kong Racing before that as well. We've done we've done the the two most elite games ever made. I'm interested to see what stupid piece of tat I come out with after playing this game because usually after there's a after there's a game that we play and it just captures me. I'm like I need some memorabilia for this. So I think I spent I think honestly I, I'm going to whisper this. I think I spent about thirty quid on an amiibo for Diddy Kong, which is far too much money for that amiibo. But it's what my for? What recently? Yeah, after we played Diddy Kong Racing, I went and bought a Diddy Kong. Oh. Uh, I will show you some of my memorabilia for the next episode. I'll get it all out. Yeah, we'll, we'll oh, go yeah, through you've it. Got, I wonder if there's a. Oh, there's, there's a banjo oh, amiibo, oh, but I bet you that's not cheap. But there was another company that made like their own version of amiibo that's not the same and it's not got like, um, what is it, NFC in them. And that one's quite good. Actually, I will go get that now. Oh, well, let's, yeah. Tell me about this. I'm going to go. And, I want to hear about this. I am going to look up the Banjo Kazooie amiibo on Amazon. See what it's going for. Forty one pounds eighty two pence for a, what the amiibo for the Banjo amiibo. Yeah. Well, this is covered in dust. I oh, am a disgrace. This is called Totaku. So, Looks like it's actually made by Microsoft, but that, in oh, terms of like a, not being an amiibo, but being, it's probably almost as good, if not better, than the amiibo anyway. It's got even got the little rare logo on its back. Yeah, that's brilliant. So maybe try and see if you can find that. P O T A K U. They made quite a few like PlayStation and Xbox things, I think, to try and combat the the amiibo boom of like little figures of game stuff that people liked. Let's have a look. T O T A K U. Oh yeah, I've not seen the banjo. Oh yeah, I see a God of War one here. Oh, there's a Bad Fur Day one. Is there? Yeah. Oh no, they, this is a whole down. And the price is 
still reasonable or have they gone nuts? Well, this this bad fur day is a first edition one. It's £42. Oh, yeah, that's a lot. And now I've broken my Amazon search because I clicked on this Tataki thing and you know when it's customers all also view these products, it's just anime porn busts. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, God, here's a naked one. Okay, I've ruined my I've ruined my Amazon. Well, time to burn that down. <laughs> there's a there's an onion knight guy as well. Is there? Yeah, that's cool. Oh well, I'm off hunting for stuff now to waste money on. It's a real shame that Dracula bites banjo shirts have never really grabbed me. Mm-hmm. I know Simon's got one, but yeah, I do want a banjo shirt of some kind. Yeah, yeah. If done right, that could be cool. It's gonna be. That's gonna be. A, if anyone listening is is a fan of Banjo Kazooie, we are gonna do our very best to have like a real celebration of that game because we talk about it a lot. It's a big part of my childhood, and I still love it right now. So there's gonna be tier lists for the music. There's gonna be whole heaps of fun shit. Oh, I can't. That's wait. gonna be a good episode. It's gonna be one. Of, it's one of my favorite games of all time. Yeah. I think outside of the Mario ones, it's probably one of my favourite platformers. So, yeah, yeah, hopefully this is a good one. And on that bombshell, I've been David, he has been Alex, we have been a winner issue, and I'm out. Keep gaming. I think we've got, we've got flowing out for a while. technical shit that was going on at the beginning and also it's very 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 hot